So why does Paul say continue in the faith? Well, the answer is because you have to continue in the faith. And there's some that do not. So, for example, it says continue in the faith. Acts chapter 14, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Colossians 1.23, if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. It says, if you continue in the faith. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 1, 4, 1, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's some people that make shipwreck of their faith. Don't be one of those people. He's saying continue in the faith, right? Continue in the faith. Psalms 73, 27 and for, for lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. So in other words, those people that were Christian and leave, they're going to get destroyed. Need more proof? Let's go to Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 1, 28. Because I want you to be convinced. So Isaiah 1, 28 um, let's see here. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. So it's talking about those people that are transgressors that forsake the Lord. Their punishment is going to be with the sinners. It's that Bible verse again where it talks about those people that in um you know first timothy 4 1 where they forsake the lord and the bible says they depart from the faith and now the bible says if you forsake the lord you're going to be consumed and we just read in um psalm 73 i think it was that those that go a whoring from god are going to get destroyed and if you want even more further proof we could go to ezra it's chapter 8. I think it's chapter 8, 22. It says, For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and wrath is against all them that forsake him. So, not once I was saved. If you forsake the Lord, you're in danger of hell fire. In Second Chronicles 15.2, it says, And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear me, Asa, and, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. So Bible verse after Bible verse. If you forsake the Lord, he's going to forsake you. You're going to get consumed. You're going to be destroyed. The lukewarm, he's going to spit out of his mouth. Repent, or your name's going to be taken on the book of life. Who has their name written in the book of life? It's saved Christians, okay? So if your name's taken out of the book of life, you're not going to have your part in the holy city, New Jerusalem. You're not going to be in heaven, and you're not going to be with Jesus. But the good news is that the Bible says, Return backsliders. Um, I don't know if I have it exactly like that. Return backsliding Israel backslider. Um, he wants you to return, but don't reach, don't don't reach that point where in Hebrews and I covered this. Um, where in Hebrews six it talks about um, people getting to a point where they can't come back to the Lord. They got too far away from the Lord and. They're not going to be um, coming back to the Lord because you're not going to get resaved. 
So, you know, here's some verses. Um, Jeremiah three twelve. it says, Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep my anger forever. So here you see, he's talking about backsliding Israel, and he wants her to return to her to him, you know. Just like if you're a backsliding Christian, the Lord wants you to return to him. Forsake your sin, confess it, and return to the Lord, Jesus Christ. That's what he wants you to do. If you left your first love, come back to it. Are you putting are you loving something more than Jesus Christ whether it be a spouse a child or entertainment or pleasure will repent and come back to the Lord Jesus Christ It says in Jeremiah 3 8 and I saw f when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not but went and played the harlot also So here he gives Israel a bill of divorce. A lot of times people get married and think, well, I found the love of my life, and they did. I'm never going to leave this person. And what ends up happening? A lot of times they leave that person. At the beginning they said they weren't going to do that. And it's kind of like that because why? The Bible says that it's a marriage relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you first get saved or we first come to Jesus Christ, you think that's not even possible. I'm never going to leave the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet people do. And that's why these warnings are here. So the Bible says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. How are you doing? Maybe you were once in the faith, but you left your first love. So the Bible says examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. You don't want to get to the point where you hear about that one person and they were once a Christian and now a hardened atheist, because that happens. Once a Christian, always a Christian? No. The Bible says a person leaves the faith. In Jeremiah 5, 7, How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me, and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery, and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's houses. The Lord says, how can I pardon? Because if he just lets us go, he wants to, but how can he? If they forsake him, he's no respecter of persons. He's a righteous judge. So if a Christian is living more wicked than someone that's not a Christian... How is he, as a righteous judge, going to pardon thee if you don't repent? And that's why the Bible says he commands everyone to repent, every man. And that includes Christians. And the Bible says that he, for us Christians, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And that in the time of need, he can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you have to be willing to confess your sins and also the bible says forsake them because if you just go boldly to the throne of grace and say something like i'm sorry but i'm going to keep my sins and i know it's a sin and i have no intention of leaving the sin and i'm just going to keep doing that well then i'd say like jeremiah 5 7 how shall the lord pardon thee for this because if you're not willing to forsake your sin how can he be pardoned if you're, if you're not willing to forsake the sin and sincerity and truth and humble yourself. Remember the Lord resisteth, resisteth the proud and give grace to the humble. It still applies to a Christian because as a Christian you can be humble. You can harden your heart. You can get into sin. You can backslide. And the Bible says you can even forsake the Lord. So the Bible says come back to the Lord. He wants you. He, remember he says in backsliding Israel, come back, come back, come back. He's not willing any should perish, but all come to repentance. And the Bible today, people are teaching it, and I fell for it too, that once saved, always saved. But that's going to lead a lot of people to the destruction. The Bible says, take heed lest you fall. He wants you to take heed and saying, okay, I can fall, and i got to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you don't think you're going to fall, if you don't think you can backslide, if you don't think you can depart from the faith, 
you're in trouble because then you're set up for a fall if you think oh no matter what i'm going to be good that i can't fall when the bible says you do you can and people do fall and forsake the lord so the bible wants you to give you the, the bible gives you these warnings to warn you and say hey watch out you know the devil is a roaring lion seeketh a, ro a roaring about like a roaring lion he walketh about seeking whom he can devour and he's talking about christians your adversaries so you got to be sober you got to be vigilant Put on the armor of God. Put on Jesus Christ. Put on the light. Read the word of God. You know, prayer. Be instant in prayer in season. Forgive your brothers and sisters because then the Lord forgave you. And if you don't forgive others, how is he going to forgive you? And lest any root of bitterness spring up in you which defiles many. It's written to the Christians. Revelation's written to the Christians. It's written to the churches that the lukewarm he's going to spit out of his mouth. I mean, it's calling you to repent. The Lord's long-suffering, giving space to repent. And he's writing to the churches to repent today. It's written for our admon on, for us too today. For our admonition, if I'm getting that word right. It's written for us. It's admonishing us today, too, the book of Revelation. Remember what I said about the book of life, that, you know, this is the verse that really helped me. Um, you know, like you talk about certain verses, like, um, you know, 1 Timothy 4, 1, Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, like I described before, if I say I'm in my driveway, I'm, I'm at my house, I'm leaving my house, you'd say, well, yeah, he was at his house, but he left his house. Just like if you say you were in the faith and then you left the faith, you'd say, yeah, he was in the faith at one point, but now he left the faith. And that's exactly what the Bible says, that there's going to be a falling away and, you know, at the end times. But even throughout all of uh, history, there was people falling away and even in the Old Testament. So this Bible verse helped me, Revelation twenty-two nineteen. Notice how it says any man. So it's like, Christian, non-Christian, it's anybody. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So, you know, this is a warning to any man, you know, not to mess with the word of God. But again, who has their part in the book of life? It's believers. So your name's written in the book of life. You have a part of the holy city and the things that are written in the book, all the promises as far as, reigning with Jesus and seeing him face to face and all those promises we could go into. So the Lord's saying here, if let's say you preach another gospel and take out the, let's say uh, you deny Jesus by saying, oh, there's more than one way to heaven or you deny the resurrection or something like that. Well, the Bible would say that's another gospel. And the Bible says, if you preach another gospel, let him be accursed, meaning a curse from God that you're not going to have anything to do with God. So that's kind of my take on, you know, also you could probably make your own translation and then take out all these verses. And if you're doing it like you do it on purpose and, you know, that would be adding and removing to or if you're adding thing about some of uh, the other religions out there, like Mormonism has another revelation, another testimony. Same with the Jehovah Witnesses. They go to Ellen G. White and Ellen G. White was a false teacher going against the Bible. So that's examples of people like Ellen G. White adding to the Word of God and in case it says to removing from the Word of God. But also I'd say too by you know preaching like another gospel. So in some cases they make their own books and add and remove the Word of God. That'd be an example. But also someone will preach another gospel and remove and add different things. Maybe they deny the Trinity. Maybe they deny the resurrection. Maybe they deny that Jesus is God. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. That's what the Bible says. Look it up. So this says, you know, you reach a certain point or whatever, you know, it's the Lord's the one who um, saves and the Lord is the one that keeps you and the Lord is the one that's a judge and the Lord is the one that um, has mercy and on those that he wants. And he's the one that, you know, basically, you know, you can't save yourself as far as Jesus. He is the only one that saved you and he's the one that saves. But you still have a part to follow God to say that you don't have any requirement or anything to do it says you have to be obedient to the faith just like you have to believe the bible calls you to repent and believe repent of your sins and believe the gospel and you know be willing to take up your cross and follow him so this verse really helped me revelation twenty two nineteen, where 
you know, the Bible says that he takes people's names out of the book of life. That's what it says. God shall take away. So it's just not some idle warning. God takes away from the book of life, meaning that there was once people that, you know, were saved and they became apostate. And in this case, they were adding and removing from the words of God from the Bible and um, some cases preaching another another gospel or maybe coming out with books going against it, you know, making up their own and they fell away from the Lord. Well, the Bible says then their names are written on the book of life. And then in Revelation 3, it says too, I think somewhere in Revelation 3, I could type it in. No examples because probably I was searching Jeremiah. But if we go to Revelation and just search Revelation, and um, I want actually the whole chapter or chapters, so type in book of life, you're going to see some cross references. And I thought it was 3 5, but I want to check. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now remember, the Lord says, if you deny me, Jesus is talking if you to Christians, right? He says to Christians, if you deny me, and well, anyone too, but talking to Christians too, if you deny me, I'm going to deny you before my father. And that's why it says, I will conf if you're an overcomer, then he's going to confess you. And you have to have that white raiment, you know, so it's like that Bible verse where he didn't have his wedding dress. He wasn't let into heaven because he didn't have his garments. He didn't have his white linen garments and he was out of place. Imagine everyone dressed the same and like everyone's wearing the white linen garment and then you see one person not having it. That person would be <laughs> really easy to spot, right? And they said, that person's not wearing the white garment. Cast them away. Cast them out of the, you know, cast them out of here. So you got to be an overcomer. And that part of that overcomer is, you know, enduring to the end and keeping the faith and how to, our faith is how we overcome the faith in Jesus Christ and following him as an example and, you know, abiding in Christ and abiding in the Holy Spirit, you know, resisting temptation and the Lord will provide a way out and to, you know, when persecution and tribulation happens to endure it, to um, accept it, to go through it and keep the faith not to deny Jesus Christ. Those people that get the mark of the beast and worship the beast, they deny the Lord. They're not going to go to heaven. When the mark of the beast comes, they're going to hell. Let no man deceive you. So the Bible warns about false doctrines, warns about another gospel. The Bible warns about people making shipwreck of their faith. And I thought shipwreck of the faith, I thought, well, they're kind of like, you know, aren't really solid Christians anymore and just... But don't be deceived. Uh, you know, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And you make shipwreck of your faith, then, you know, you're in danger of becoming apostate if you don't come back. You know, sh total shipwreck. You know, I don't know if that means you're at the apostate state or, you know, maybe there's some time to get back. You know, get in a, get throughout the, throughout the life uh, boat or throughout the, I don't know, that song, the life um Throw out the lifeline to that person that's maybe drowning out there and get them back. So, and that this helps so much understanding this because it says if you see a brother sin, oops, again, I was searching just Revelation, but I'll just search the New Testament. Um, let's see, just Matthew to Revelation. Now, if you see a brother sin, which is not a sin unto death, and you give him life, and I, it's in 1 John, I'm thinking. Let's see. But there's other verses that go along with that, too. I think Matthew 18, 21 might be one. But Matthew 18, 21 says, you know, then come, came Peter to him and said, Lord, he's talking to Jesus, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? And look what the Lord Jesus, because he thought, well, like, you know, should I forgive someone seven times? And then... <laughs> So, I mean, but Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto these until seven times, but until 70 times seven, which is a lot. So the point is you forgive your brother. If he's genuine and wants, you know, says sorry, you say, okay, yeah, I know I've sinned before too. and I forgive you. And don't forget Jesus Christ. I don't know how he could, but some become forgetful hearers. 
this, you know, he forgave you of your sin. So you got to forgive others now. And what a big, you know, you know, your brother comes to you and sinned against you. But think about all the sins you've done against Jesus Christ. And he forgave you if you turn to him and then you don't forgive your brother. The Bible says that'd be evil and you don't have an unforgiven spirit. So forgive, you know, make up with your brother before giving your gift at the altar. You know, make sure you forgive your brother. So 1 John five sixteen. if any man see his brother's sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There's a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. So the only thing about that verse, I'm not sure at the end if it's saying, like, don't pray for that person to commit the sin unto death. Other people will say, well, don't pray for that brother if they committed a sin unto death. So, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's saying, like, you know, don't hope, you know, because you, God's not willing any should perish, right? So you shouldn't be saying, oh, I hope that person out there makes that sin unto death and they go to hell. And then this, that's, you know, that's unloving. You know, you don't want a person to get that far where they make the sin unto death and they're going to hell and there's nothing they can do about it. So you don't want to pray for that. You want to pray sometimes for God's judgment. Like, yeah, that, you know, in Psalms, it talks about that. And maybe a lot of times those people we're already completely lost. You know, the Lord knows that. But, you know, if you do think someone, you know, is kind of not at that point, you'd still want to see them, you know, get punished if they don't repent and maybe face some kind of judgment, but also come back or receive the Lord. And sometimes, you know, through God's judgment, a lot of times they see that. Think about Nineveh and they preached judgment and they repented then. So, you know, that'd be a good case for Nineveh. A lot of those people didn't commit the sin unto death and they're preached okay if you don't repent now here's your last chance you're going to get destroyed killed and end up in hell basically and they repented so you know you don't want to see Nineveh like you know I don't know where Jonah's heart was if he was thinking that kind of thing I'm not sure but you know there's some people that might have saw Nineveh and said I want to see them destroyed and go to hell right now but the Lord gave him time to repent because he's long suffering so if you see a brother sin not unto death and give him life for that. So you, if you see a brother sin, this is why it's so important. And the once saved, always saved. It's so misleading and so dangerous because if a Christian thinks, oh, I can't fall away. I can't go to hell. I can't become apostate. And, you know, even if I do, I'm still going to heaven, they think. Well, that's not what the Bible says. So then if you see a brother, an example, like I saw someone, and I had a bad experience with drinking. And, you know, I, I needed that brother to come to me and help me out. But in this case... I saw someone now drinking and I I said to him, hey, you know, basically I said, the Bible says drunkards shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, that you have to repent from your drunkenness. Otherwise, the Bible says you're going to hell if you don't repent. And let's say you stay a drunkard and the Lord wants you to come back and get away. You know, that's what you try to do. And you can pray about it and um, you want to uh, give them life for that. So they come back, you know, so then, oh, I didn't realize it was that serious and I thought, you know, I would be okay. They might think that because sin deceives and they think, oh, it's not that bad. I'm sober most of the time, but, you know, I'm just drinking on the weekends and, you know, binge drinking. That's bad enough and tell them that's a sin. And then they say, okay, I didn't realize it was that bad. And then they say, Lord, please help me. Please give me a little time. Or I, sometimes they might turn right away, but they might say, I need some time here and I, I want to turn today. And, you know, I think the Lord will give them some time and stuff. But the point is to return soon. And then you help that brother out and you gave him life. And otherwise, if they would have kept going down their way of drinking and become a drunkard, you don't know how it's going to happen. If they Maybe they never turned from it and they got worse and kept drinking and drinking and drinking every day. And the Bible says about that drunken servant, he was a servant, right? So don't act like he wasn't. He was a servant of who? The Lord. And he became a drunkard. And then the Lord came back and the person never repented. And then he's tossed where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's tossed into hell. He's t he went to lake of fire eventually. So that's the warning. So like now that I understand this, I want to tell you guys, you know, because I taught it before. I thought, yeah, once saved, I was saved. That's what I got taught. But, you know, the Bible says he's faithful to that promise. But you still got to be faithful. Remember in Jeremiah, I described the marriage situation where someone gets married they think i'm going to be this is going to be forever and stuff happens and that's just like us guys christians are married to jesus and 
you think at first there's no way this is going to happen but the bible says take heed lest you fall so you don't want to think oh it's never going to happen to me and then i can you know and then i'm i'm such a strong christian that i can never get into this and then that's not a good way to think and then you want to have a, to talk about accountability well that's with the lord first through the holy spirit and you know prayer life through jesus interceding for us but you also want to have good relationships with other christians so then when this does happen they can you know be responsible and say hey you got to stop that you know if it if you have to get rid of the computer and toss it out that's what you got to do if you got to get rid of your cell phone toss it out and if you got to get a new job and it's not working that's what you got to do you know it's stuff you got to you know stuff like that you know but mostly you know foremost you know repent and but sometimes there has to be stuff like that where you get into it and it's so hard to get back out that you might have to just get rid of your your computer get rid of your cell phone so i just pray for that lord and um that people can see this you know this is my second time making this video and maybe there's a reason so i better end it in prayer so lord I just pray this video records this time, and if it doesn't, then maybe it's meant to be for some reason. But I just pray, Lord, you know, I was <laughs> once saved. I was saved for a long time, and, you know, I've still got a lot not to learn, Lord. And I just want to help people out there, and I, I want the churches to see, you know, the people that I know even at my church, Lord. I want them to see whether, whether it be certain people, you know, that's in my heart, and you know who believes this, and friends that believe it. And I'm sure someone listening to this is affected by it, and I just pray the people listening to this give it a chance and you know if they need to watch a video again or think about it on their own that they take it to you lord in prayer and keep studying the scriptures and i just pray lord that um you know i'm just thankful to god for this morning because it really encourages me to keep on going and not quitting you know keeping the faith and contending for the faith and quit ye like men and run the race that we may obtain and you know it really helps me understand the gospel lord and um you know as far as the great cost of what you paid and not to take it lightly and to you know respect and fear you god because you know respect our persons and you know i just pray for especially those young christians listening to it if it's some children here that that it'd be a good example for them to you know keep in the fear of the lord so they don't lose that fear of the lord lord because the fear of the lord's needed and the holiness is needed and um the love of the lord is needed right so you have to love the lord jesus and we love you god for those that truly love you but help me to examine myself lord and so i won't be judged like the bible says to examine yourself and it's an important thing so i just pray lord that people examine themselves here and um not to think about others right now but think about themselves and see where they're at with the faith and to remind you that i thank you for your long suffering lord and you delight in mercy so i thank you there too for that lord that otherwise we would have been consumed a lot of, a lot a long time ago so just thank you for that lord and just pray we can help encourage each other and build each other up in these close to these end times lord and just keep on going and taking one day at a time and because um, we know the days thereof are evil and just to take one day at a time lord and keep keep our prayer life going and keep the um flame the oil burning and be the wise virgins and to be a wise virgin and to keep the faith as far as um a christian and you know be like a wise virgin as virgin i should say you know but um you know and just i just pray you like that like you said you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and i just pray for that lord and pray to stay humble and meek and um as far as those things and to watch the tongue i know that's a you know trouble with me sometimes to watch my tongue or when i'm tired i can get kind of um impatient or whatever you'd say and so I just kind of confess that and need help there. So, so I just pray for that, Lord, and I pray that people realize that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible. To, it's impossible to please you, God. So I just pray that um, the people that that continue in the faith, like the Bible says, and how we started this video where Paul says, "Continue in the faith." So we got to continue in the faith, Lord. And Paul was trying to admonish us to keep in the faith and keep going so so i just thank you lord for this video and i hope it records and hope it can be a blessing to other people so if someone needs to repent of um, this teaching that they see the video and repent